So here's the Inventec Avatar. Um, this is running Windows 10 right here. What kind of Windows 10 this is? This is Windows 10 IoT CoPro. This is very light OS in uh, Microsoft OS system. It's around one to uh, around two uh, two hundred. 200 megabytes in this yeah. OS, so this is very light OS, so we can put on the device, like the uh, very small and the low cost. This is an ARM uh, yes. Qualcomm CPU? Yeah, Qualcomm CPU is using Qualcomm APQ 8099, I can show you. Yeah. So, it's a Qualcomm OS. Right here is all the information, oh, here. Yeah. So this is an APQ 80. 8009 uh, with the IoT Core Pro. Yeah, with the IoT Core Pro, it is an OS. And then we also pass the Microsoft Azure certification. So you can you can find this device in Microsoft Azure website. Then and this can using just like a makeable and we also connect to Asia. So this is our workflow. You can find it. Yeah, so what does it mean? So there's a device yes. and it, what does it do? What is okay. a signal inside? Okay. This is for the demo. It's like a beacon for Bluetooth or so what? Yeah. The, the traditional beacon is like a, only the BT signal. You can broadcast and receive. Yeah. And uh, right now we are using why we call this smart? Because we put a Wi-Fi module in here. So this device is can correct the BT signal and the upload the log with Wi-Fi and connect to Asia. So this is a workflow. So it's not only a BT beacon. Yes. It's, it's also a Wi-Fi yes, smart device. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's also using Wi-Fi to upload the log. A lot. A log. The BT a log. A lot. Log, the BT log, and you can analyze the log from Asia. All right. So what's uh, uh, what is the uh, the Windows 10 IoT Core Pro? Is there a Pro and a No Pro or? Uh, yes, the Core is uh, the, the free Windows. The the free what? Free Windows. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Ah, there's a there's a free version. Yes, there's a free version of Windows. Uh, uh, free Windows. IoT Windows. So that's Windows 10 IoT Core. Uh, and then the pro version is one we uh, license and sell to um, our OEMs and ODMs like Inventec who build devices so it comes with some extra capabilities and, and servicing um, and ability to turn manage your updates. Uh, may I ask what are you doing there? What, what is this device? <laughs> I, this is a Raspberry Pi running Windows 10 IoT Core and I'm putting in a sensor connecting a sensor, excuse me, move my glasses so I can actually see. So uh, the nice thing about Windows 10 IoT Core is you can talk through a universal Windows application, you can talk directly to the hardware. So that means I don't have to write a kernel level uh, driver, I can, from a universal Windows app, I can talk directly to these pins, which are the buses, these are like GPIO inputs, outputs, serial bus. Uh, Two, so, three, four, five, so it's still Windows 10, but it's yes. uh, for IoT, right? Yeah, so it's a slightly so smaller footprint version. It runs on uh, as low as 256 meg of RAM, uh, 400 megahertz processor. So it's targeted for like smaller devices, like the, the Beacon device, and running on things like a Raspberry Pi here. This is also that's a Raspberry Pi. So yeah. um, these are this is a 35 dollar board. So it's a very great it's a great platform for uh, you know. Prototyping, mm -hmm. rapid development, prototyping, and creating your idea. So this is a dual core. Was it a dual core uh, ARM Cortex A7? Yep. Uh, I think it's also ARM Cortex A7. This one, right? The Raspberry Pi. Yep. So uh, very smooth performance. And what's the status with the Windows 10 IoT? Uh, is it already in production or is it still yes, beta? It's been, it's been out for a while. So, I, so Windows 10 IoT is the name given to the family of products. So there's a whole. Um, a, there are like three editions within Windows 10 IoT. There's a full enterprise edition for like kiosks, um, ATMs, those types of devices. There's a Windows 10 IoT uh, mobile, en mobile enterprise for things like these ruggedized handheld terminals. And then there's an addition for... Uh, is there Windows 10 IoT in there? Yeah. So what is this, uh, what is this device? This is a. Uh, yes. Bear with me a second, more. So there's also an ARM CPU in this. That's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, uh, Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Uh, so Qualcomm is totally uh, compatible, and uh, Broadcom. This is Broadcom. And, uh, 
A bunch of different ones. So how soon is this uh, this product on the market? When it's going to be available? This is right now available. Uh, this is available right now and we got the customer is working on the validation and you can buy, you can show the BT signal. So what does it do? This is a log which we find from Asia. Nice. And uh, this is for and right now it's changing like this. And if I connect this one, so then you get close to that, and then that one's also gonna detect or? Yeah, but network connection is very yeah. weak because I'm not very good connected. Yeah. I find so I cannot show okay. the Maybe like all right. So, what's the price of uh, one of those? The price is mentioned is for the product or uh, for enter is enterprise product. Yes. And uh, people can buy the special smart beacon, advanced beacons. And uh, is it is it possible to say that uh, Microsoft is a is a is solving some things that nobody else is being able to do on these kinds of devices with the Windows 10 IoT. Uh, I don't think I don't know. So I don't know whether we could actually say that, but I, we are definitely enabling IoT scenarios. So we're leveraging all of Windows 10 uh, and then enabling enabling these devices to come to market. So if you think of an IoT device, whether it's out there autonomously in an environment. We're using all the security of Windows 10, so you obviously want to make sure your devices are secure, the data on the device is secure, you've got encryption on the device, maybe it's, maybe it's a scenario where you need uh, TPM support, so if we support TPM chips for encrypting keys and things, uh, encrypting the drive itself, UEFI, secure boot, so again, all these capabilities are built into Windows 10, so we enable that with that platform to, so you've got a secure device. We also add in extra uh, connectivity, with uh, like uh, work, working with some of the open open source foundations, like the UPC uh, UA, I think it is for connecting devices, not just Windows devices to Windows devices, but Windows devices to sensors to other OSs, and then connecting them to the cloud as well. And then with our Azure IoT suite, which is just here, we have a whole suite of like services for onboarding data, you know, rapidly onboarding data. Uh, doing some analytics with the data as well. Um, so this team here can tell you all about sites companies a whole bunch of IoT solutions through the Azure cloud. Yep. And uh, so, the, so you're using, op you're participating in some open source projects, and you're using, but this is not open source, right? Is that an advantage to be a proprietary in terms of security? Uh, so the OS itself, we obviously the OS is not open source, but the, one of the versions of the OS is. Um, it's free to download and it's free to distribute as well. So we're really enabling uh, makers and people who want to innovate to actually, you've got Visual Studio Community free, you've got Windows 10 IoT Core free, you can buy a $35 maker board and just you can start creating your device. It's pretty low barrier to entry. And then again, Azure services, there's some basic services free. So you can start creating a cloud your own back-end infrastructure analytics, so you can really rapidly get going on prototype um, straight away with the whole Microsoft stack. But uh, there's a lot of devices in the world, right? Correct. So uh, how, does it just work on everything? It can't just work? You, you would have to support it, right? Yes. At Microsoft? Yeah, so we, we make sure in our connectivity stack, we obviously work with some of the standards and put that into the OS. Um, you know some of the other standards out out there, so that you can connect a Windows device to a smaller like uh, sensor, like a smart sensor. Maybe it's just got a small MCU inside it. Um, so you can create, for an example, a gateway with IoT Core, and the gateway is connected to maybe a hundred or so sensors. Like maybe it's building automation or a HVAC system where you're automating all this. Um, so Windows would be an ideal platform for a, for an IoT gateway, collecting all that data from non-Windows devices. Uh, doing some uh, some processing with that local data, making sure it's secure, and then sending that to the cloud for further processing. But if somebody's making a new device and they want to have Windows 10 IoT, they have to contact you in partnership on the on the Pro Edition to get it optimized so, for another hardware. So on the Pro Edition, they go through the normal channels of working with Microsoft or our dis distributors. On the IoT Core, 
um, you can just do that yourself. You can download it free, you can sign up free, you can actually have the legal rights to distribute it free as well. But uh, what if there's something that doesn't work? Can you fix it yourself or you have to wait for Microsoft to do it? So we all do, uh, on the free version, we will be supporting that and pushing out updates, security updates, so you can just download the latest update. Um, and if it's connected to the internet, we'll be pushing updates to it automatically. And you said it had everything from, from Windows 10? What does that uh, mean when you say that it well, has everything from Windows 10? Not everything from Windows 10. So you get the, it's the it's IoT Core. The reason why it's smaller than the regular Windows 10 Enterprise, there is no shell. There's no graphical user interface, There right? is a graphical user interface, but it's, your, it's the universal Windows app. So whatever application you put on the device is the experience you see if you had a UI. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the, the main, one of the major differences. That's how we got the footprint smaller, enabling it to run on uh, lower end processors. Does, does that mean you run Windows but only one app? No, you, run, you can run one UI app, which is your interface to it, uh, but you could have multiple processes running in the background. So you could have a web server, some other processes, agents that you write um, in the background as part of your solution. But your, if you had a display on your device, that, that you can only have one UI display, which is a universal Windows app. Can we see a UI? Um, which one is running? Uh, is one of them? This one is going to boot up eventually, and uh, uh, we'll have it in there. And then, uh, but does it, the UI it doesn't look like uh, like a Windows 10 normal, right? It's just going to be something something else. Uh, yes, I'll show you this in a minute when we get things running. And hold on, be missing something. 